So many awesome cameos. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 actors you forgot were on that 70s show. I'm Episcopalian and my best friend's Presbyterian, but we're still best friends. I know, it's hard work, but it's worth it. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at celebrities who appeared on that 70s show during its 8th season run, whose cameos you may have forgotten about. Hey, Ted Nugent and I were wondering, did you ever break up with that loser boyfriend of yours? <laughs> Not yet, Alice Cooper! Number 10. Allison Hannigan While you'd be hard-pressed to describe Allison Hannigan as a full-on household name, the comedic actress has snuck and sneaked her way into a handful of iconic films and TV shows over the years. You're right. This one looks like the guy in the What Drugs Can Do To You film strip. <laughs> From Buffy the Vampire Slayer and the American Pie film series, to her career-defining run as Lily Aldrin on How I Met Your Mother. Oh, oh, ten, ten seconds! Suck it, losers! <laughs> With so many memorable roles under her belt, it can be easy to forget that she had a two-episode stint on That 70s Show back in 2004. Wait, you like candy? Yeah, I'm out of good and plenty. It says on the box that there's plenty, but, but it's, it's never, never enough. enough. Jinx! One, two, three, four, five, you owe me a Coke! Hannigan played Susie Simpson, Calso's police academy friend that Fez develops a crush on. And you really missed out because I spent a semester in France and I do stuff American girls think is gross. <laughs> Number 9. Jenna Fisher Few actors achieve mainstream success overnight. For example, it took Jenna Fisher seven years before she landed the role of Pam Beasley on The Office, a show we feel confident saying will go on as one of television's most beloved. When I get eight hours compared to like six hours, <laughs> like big difference. Really? Oh yeah. Gotta get your REM cycle going with the whole sleeping better than not. Along the way, Fisher scored bit parts in a number of different films and TV shows, including That 70s Show. Oh, Donna, how awful! What? Oh, no, no, I just know how complete being married has made me, and I always feel so sad when I see girls your age whose window to find that kind of happiness is so, so small. <laughs> the actress popped up in a Season 7 episode, Don't Lie to Me, and played Stacey Wanamaker, a character whose name feels a touch outdated and more than a little sexist. Oh well, that's all behind her now. Honey, I've seen a lot of girls like you who wasted years on a guy who never came through. And before you know it, you're past your expiration date. <laughs> Number 8. Jessica Simpson Season 5 of That 70s Show kicked off with Kelso and Donna living in California, after the two ran off at the end of the previous season. I sat at my mom's house for three hours. Eric still hasn't called. Hey, you know what might make you feel better? Playing pinball. Over there. <laughs> it was during his time in the Golden State that Kelso met and began to date Annette, who was played by Jessica Simpson. I didn't know him, but there's a Carly Simon song that always cheers me up. <clears throat> no, wait, you don't I have... haven't got time for the pain. I haven't the room for the pain. I haven't the need for the pain. Oh, that was great. Anymore. What do I do? Do I clap? At the time, Simpson was one of the hottest pop stars on the planet, so her three-episode arc was less of a career stepping stone and more of an attempt by the show's producers to cash in on her popularity. Be that as it may, her portrayal of the air-headed Annette was hilarious and led to more film and TV work for Simpson. I'm going back to California. Baby, no! I'll prove that I'm over her. I'll bet you 50 bucks that if we do it, I'll be into it. <laughs> Bye, Michael. Number 7. Luke Wilson Luke Wilson was hardly a household name the first time he appeared on that 70s show. Hey, maybe I can help. I always keep a spare case of beer in the Trans Am. A little tip I picked up in the army. However, when he made his final appearance in 2005, he'd found mainstream success thanks to roles in Old School and the Charlie's Angels and Legally Blonde film franchises. As such, it can be easy to forget that he played Kelso's older brother, Casey, across six different episodes. Here's my number. Well, you know, I was gonna get that from you tomorrow night. When we go out. We're going out? Yeah. 
I'll pick you up at the hub after school. I'll be in the Trans Am. I love the Trans Am. Everybody does. <laughs> Calm, cool, and collected, Casey proved to be the perfect romantic foil to Eric, stealing Donna's affection with his good looks and devil-may-care attitude. In the end, Eric prevailed, but fans were still clamoring for more Casey Kelso. You see, Foreman, it's just words. You don't have to mean it. If you make her cry, I'm coming right back here to kick your ass. <laughs> Number 6. Lindsay Lohan Okay, I want the full fetish treatment. A wash, cream rinse, and a lot of that wiggly stuff you do with your fingers. <laughs> it's magical. Abracadabra, baby! <laughs> Let's face it, Lilo's public life, work, and image have gone through some changes since 2004, so it's easy for her that 70s appearance to have slipped through the cracks of our collective memories. Lohan played Danielle, a client that Fez attempts to seduce while working at a salon. Maybe I should blow off my date and go out with a guy like you. And when I say a guy like you, I mean you, specifically. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but just to be clear, I still have a tip coming, right? <laughs> but Danielle winds up attracting the attention of Kelso as well, and the two friends end up fighting over her. Danielle, you have to choose, him or me. But I said I... choose, woman! <laughs> well, Fez, if I have to choose between the two of you, I mean, the choice is obvious. <laughs> I choose you, Fez. What, are you stupid? <laughs> what was ironic about Fez chasing after Danielle was the fact that Lohan and Wilmer Valderrama were in a relationship at the time. Unfortunately, they broke up not long after working together. You're sensitive and thoughtful and understanding and very, very sexy. Lady, don't ever stop talking. <laughs> Number 5. Betty White Screen legend Betty White has been acting for over 80 years, and in that time, she's accrued over 100 acting credits. Bert, sweetie, I think that car is trying to pass. Why don't you move over? Oh, he's fine. <laughs> Honey, I really think you should move over. Sweetie, he can go around. Move! I move. <laughs> Among them is a well-received recurring role on that 70s show. White played B. Sigurdsson, Kitty Foreman's mother. In honor of this special day, I would like to tell you that I am thankful that you are my mother and I love you. <laughs> Isn't there something you would like to tell me? Actually, I would like some more tea. In true Betty White fashion, the character's sweet and innocent exterior is hiding a caustically sharp-tongued critic, whose quick wit and criticism often puts her at odds with her daughter. Huh? How you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Mom, your husband, my father, is gone. You're not fine. You're right. I think I chipped a tooth on your manicotti. <laughs> <laughs> when I die, get a caterer. <laughs> Due to the sheer volume of work that White has put in over the years, we doubt this role would land in her top 10 performances of all time. As such, it's easy to forget about her time on that 70s show. Mom. Mom, why don't you ever really talk to me? I told you I liked your cookies. <laughs> I'm gonna find your father. Bert! <laughs> Number four, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. You don't mind me being your chemistry lab partner? No, why would I mind? Just cause I, uh, you know, I tend to blow things up. Joseph Gordon-Levitt only appeared in one episode of That 70s Show, but it was an attention getter. Joseph played Buddy Morgan, who, by attempting to put the moves on Eric, was revealed to be gay, despite owning a totally bitchin' Trans Am. Oh, hey, your car's still at school, huh? Yeah, you're damn right it is! <laughs> well, I could drop you off if you want. Oh, yeah, sure. And hey, guys, I'm real sorry I forgot about you. Hey, did you want to drive? Hell yeah! <laughs> when Buddy steals a date-making kiss, audiences were shocked, although less so than Eric himself. But it's not me. Mm-hmm. Even then, it was clear the ultra-charismatic JGL was heading for mainstream success. But while he was originally meant to have a recurring role on the series, audiences were deemed reluctant to accept a homosexual character chasing Eric, resulting in Buddy and Gordon Levitt being dropped from the show. Listen, man, if you don't want to be my lab partner anymore, then I'll, I'll understand. No, no. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. Um, look, we're still friends. 
Really? Yeah. Number three, Cole and Dylan Sprouse. These celebrity twins burst onto the scene with starring roles on the Disney Channel series, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody in 2005, having already established themselves with roles in films like Big Daddy and shows such as Friends. The identical twins often split screen time by playing the same character, but not on that 70s show. I miss my friends. What? What? Stop it. Stop it. No, stop copying me. Stop copying me. I'm stupid. You're stupid. Damn it! The duo appeared together in season four, hanging out with Kelso after he gets separated from Hyde, Fez, and Jackie while at an amusement park. Despite limited screen time, the Sprouse boys still manage to coax a laugh out of viewers, teasing Kelso while he waits for his friends to find him. Hey, Einstein, you gonna eat that ice cream? My name's not Einstein. It's Kelso. And yeah, I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> That's it! Number 2. Amy Adams Who'd have guessed that the girl who played Kat Peterson in the season 2 episode Burning Down the House would go on to become one of the greatest actors of her generation? So, that was fun. No, oh, Disneyland is fun. That was nasty. <laughs> Six-time Academy Award nominee Amy Adams' first television role was playing one of Jackie's popular friends who hooks up with Hyde at a party. Hello, Steven. Oh, I see how this is gonna be. So, when you're with your little clique, you're too good for me. Right. But they're gone now, so... Hi. The guest spot was hardly a memorable one, but it ultimately proved to be the tip of the iceberg in regard to Amy's acting ability. It wasn't long after her appearance on that 70s show that she was landing key roles in films such as Catch Me If You Can and Junebug. God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to let you stay that way. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. No, sillies. There's way too much work to do at the station to daydream. I mean, I have to take my top off and sort records, and then Zana and I have to French kiss. It's exhausting. How can I be happy? Our whole life is a lie. I mean, am I really supposed to believe that Kathy's my little sister? She didn't look anything like me. She is Cuban, for Pete's sake! I'm Christy. And you are? Ferrari. <laughs> Fast Ferrari. <laughs> so, Vic tells me you used to be a cop. Uh, wait, I, I thought you were Vic. There's another Vic. Try to keep up. I, I, I frankly don't understand why any man would ever want to be with you. So, want to make out? <laughs> Number 1. Dwayne The Rock Johnson The People's Champion is currently one of the hottest movie stars on the planet today, but back in 1999, he was best known for the smell of his cooking. Mr. Johnson, you gave that team of midgets an ass whooping, sir. <laughs> well, you apologize a little guy, and the whole crowd turns on you. And then when you're standing there wondering what they're booing about, you get bit on the kneecaps. <laughs> Look at my knees. Midget bites. He managed to combine his two skills in this hilarious That 70s Show spot, wherein he plays Eric's favorite wrestler and his own father, Rocky Johnson. Okay, you see the guy getting in the ring? That's Rocky Johnson. Man, he's the best! The best! They're not even fighters, I mean, it's all tricks! I could get up there right now. Oh, damn! He dropped that guy right on his head! Despite spending half his screen time wrestling little people and the other half complaining about it, yeah, it's not the best. Johnson manages to imbue his character with depth and personality, creating a likable persona that resonated with viewers. All these years later, it's still fun to look back on The Rock's humble beginnings, and in particular, this hilarious cameo. No, it's really nice, bringing your kid to a wrestling match. You know, I got a son, and one day, he's gonna become the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.